Hello, Internet. So today uh, we're going to make a simple light switch project that's going to show off some of the work that we've done in Visual Studio 2013 to improve the performance of our light switch HTML client. So before we get started, I just wanted to uh, show off our MSDN light switch homepage here. There's plenty of videos here up on the MSDN page uh, to help you get started if you're new to light switch. There's also some deep dive videos for more of the uh, technical gurus out there. Um, and there's some plural site videos, also known as hardcore developer training. So some great stuff to get started on. Uh, today's video is going to be kind of short, and it's going to it's meant to accompany a blog that I will also link to in the summary page. All right, so uh, let's get rolling. Let's go ahead and make ourselves, I've got Visual Studio open up here, 2013. Let's make us a new project. Okay, so today I'm going to make a, a light switch HTML application, a visual basic one. We'll just call this um, our light switch proj. Okay, so we'll go ahead, okay on that. So this is going to make us the light switch HTML client and server. Uh, and then we will take a look at a couple things with this. As soon as it finishes loading, it takes about six seconds. There it is. All right, so with light switch, you can attach to external data sources. Uh, the one I want to attach to here is actually a, an O data source. You can attach to SQL databases, SharePoint data sources, RIA services. In this case, we're going to attach to an O data service. And this will allow us to pull back some sample data. So the one that we want is a uh, Northwind data source from the oldata.org website. And we'll just do none for the authentication type here. Anybody can pull data back from this uh, old data source. It's very slick to kind of help you get started up and rolling when you, if you want to explore light switch a little bit. Let's check this out here. Okay, so it's pulled back the entities for us. Uh, so the entities available on this data source are just the typical Northwind entities. The one that I care about here specifically is the customer's entity. That should be good enough for our needs. Now it's going to make us a data source called Northwind's Entity Data. It's only going to have the customer's entity in it. All right, this will be on our light switch server. It's pulling that back right now. Let's just take a couple seconds. Okay, so... On our server project, we have the Northwind Entities data, customer's entity. We just need a screen now so that we can see this when we F5 it. Um, all right, so the easiest way to do that is to select our HTML client project, set focus on the screens folder, right click, and we'll say add screen. And light switch comes bundled with a few screen templates. The one that we care about is the browse data screen for this example. So we'll use this browse data screen. It's kind of a nice way to represent the data from the entity. And we'll go ahead and select our customer entity. OK, so this is going to make us a very simple screen. It's going to have a list control. It's basically going to list out some records from the customer entity here. So I'm going to do a, one more thing. And what I want to have happen is that when I select a customer record, I want it to um, bring up a view screen with additional detail about that customer that I've selected. So an easy way that you, you can do that is select the list control, go over to your actions, and on item tap, we can uh, select this link here. So when the, a row is selected or tapped, if you're using a, a tablet device, it's going to uh, invoke a method. Now the method that I wanted to invoke is this one here called view selected. So I don't currently have a view screen, but light switch is nice enough that it's going to uh, already know that and it's going to help me make a view screen. So it brings up the screen template again and you can see the view detail screen is uh, is available for us and we'll make a customer details view screen. Okay, there it is. So we got, we got a nice view screen made for us. It's going to show us the company name, contact name, title, city, things like that. Uh, all right, so what I want to do at this point is we're going to F5 this. 
We're going to launch the HTML client. I'll show off a couple of things with the customer that we've just done here. Um, and then we'll take a look specifically at uh, the things that we've done to improve performance. OK, so right now it's pulling back data from the customer entity. So you can see you got all your typical Northwind customers here. you got Alfki, all these other ones. If I go ahead and select one, it'll bring up the view screen that I created automatically. So there it is, Alfki. It's got the company name, uh, contact name, country, all that stuff. And click back here. We'll go back to the browse customers. Now, if you're running IE, uh, and hopefully you are, you can bring up um, the F12 developer tools. And we can uh, use this to, to look at a couple requests. And the requests are going to show us the perf improvements that we've made with the client here. So the F12 developer tools are a very slick way to, to get some insight into what kind of traffic is going across uh, your browser. So we have to go to the network tab here and start capturing. Now that we've started capturing, we need to refresh the client. OK, so here we got this. What happens here is it's showing us all the HTTP requests that happens when, when you uh, load the client up for the first time. So when you first load up the client, it's got to bring back a bunch of JavaScript and uh, images and things of that nature. The last one is the one that I care about for this example. <clears throat> this last HTTP request here is querying the customer's entity. And we'll double click on it, get some more details. And it's querying it and asking for the first 45 records. So the thing that's neat here is this accept header. This is what we've changed with this release. We're saying now that the HTML client wants what's called a JSON Lite format. And that's what this header bit means right here. Uh, JSON Lite is a very, uh, uh, a very compact format that represents old data. Uh, and by doing this, when we ask for that, the server, if we look at the response headers tab, uh, will say, OK, the content type is this uh, JSON old data minimal, minimal metadata. So that is actually the same thing as JSON Lite. It's just another name for JSON Lite. Uh, and that, by using JSON Lite instead of JSON verbose, this is what JSON Lite looks like here. By using JSON Lite, we are using roughly 14 kilobytes for this response. All right, so how does this compare against the previous release? So on the previous release, we were using JSON, a format called JSON Verbose, and that was around 30 kilobytes for this entity. So it, it's about 50% less in this scenario. Uh, your mileage might vary depending upon the size of, you, the size of your entity. Uh, but in this case, it's about 50% less. So less bandwidth, of course, means that the client is going to it's going to load up faster, and the server is actually going to process the data faster. And I go over all this on the blog. I don't want to give away too much, but if you check out the blog, I go into these details a little bit more. Um, so that is that is it. We'll get out of the F12 tools, and we'll stop the HTML client. Okay. All right, so please check out the blog for some more details. Um, and feel free to leave a comment below in the video. And thank you very much, Internet. We will talk to you later.